Hi, my name is Corey Holden and I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawk Ridge Systems. And this video is about the differences in constructing a multi-body part versus making individual parts and using an assembly to mate them together. So I'm going to start out with the multi-bodies part, which you can see here is one single solid body, which represents my piston rod. And I'm going to design two brass bushings in context of this part. So you'd start this just like any other sketch. I just do a sketch on the front plane. And I'm going to take advantage of my pre-existing geometry. So I'm going to grab these edges and convert the entities just to save myself some time. At this point I need to make these solid bodies, so I'm going to use my extrude feature. And I'm going to use the mid-plane option to take advantage of symmetry. I need to make these a little longer just to make sure that they extend past the edges of my piston rod here. The really important thing is to turn merge results off. If I don't, I'm going to end up with one single solid body. So I'm going to turn that off to get three separate solid bodies. I don't want these holes to be plugged, so I'm going to use a thin feature to add a specific thickness to those bushings. I make sure that it's going in for the direction, that way the material is not overlapping. And when I accept this, now I have three separate solid bodies. I have the piston rod and a separate solid body for each of my bushings. Now what's unique about this is notice that if I go to change or rotate this, I can't move this at all. It's locked in place. Now this would be fine if this was coming from an outside manufacturer and I expected this part to be press fit. I might even prefer this. However, if I want some kind of motion, I have to use assemblies to get that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over into assemblies and kind of go through the same process as to how I'd want to make this bushing inside an assembly all in context. Now keep in mind I'd want the same advantages there. I used convert entities that way it's going to make updates down the road quicker. I want to kind of go through that same process here and make sure that my updates are going to be fast and easy down the road. So I'm just going to insert a new part in the context of this assembly. And I'm going to go through the same thing. I'm going to grab the edge of my piston rod and I'm going to convert entities. Then I'm going to make this a single solid body by extruding that mid-plane. Same distance as before because I want all the same dimensioning. Now I'm going to have to apply a thin feature to make sure that I have a specific thickness to this. Going internal, and now I have that separate part that would represent my bushing. So I'll exit out of edit component, and now you can see that I have three separate parts here in my feature manager design tree in this assembly. Now notice if I grab this, it can't rotate. It's stuck in place. Well, if I go into my mates option, you can see that SolidWorks has automatically added this in-place mate for me. So what I'm going to want to do is delete this in-place mate, and I'm going to want to add the mates of my own to make sure that I'm getting the dynamic motion that I would expect out of this assembly. So at this point, I can move this freely. So I want to add the concentric mate to begin to restrict my degrees of freedom. And last, I'm going to make sure to add a width mate to make sure that this is going to be centered up just like that mid-plane extrusion did in my multi-body part. So I'm going to make sure to add a width mate in here. And now I'm only going to have one remaining degree of freedom, and that remaining degree of freedom is going to be rotational. So you can see I have that rotational degree of freedom, and I can actually see the motion that I might expect out of this part. Now something different to keep in mind here too is this part was designed in context of this assembly. So you notice that it's got these brackets around it. It, is, it has at the moment no external file. It's only internal disassembly. This is the only place you can find it. So if you find yourself in this situation where you did all this linking and in context design by just inserting a new part here in the assembly, what you can do is just simply right click on it and you'd save this part in external file. And that will separate it. Um, you will still have the external references back to the assembly but then this part will have its own individual file um, wherever you want to place that part. So in this video we covered a few of the differences between multi-bodies and assemblies. Thanks for watching and look for more videos from Hawkridge Systems.